September 2021 here in Anderson, Indiana at the Anderson Seventh-day Adventist Church. Welcome. Good to see all of you here this morning that are in the sanctuary joining us today. And also welcome to all those online and watching today, wherever you may be. We appreciate your support and glad that you're uh, tuning in this morning as we conclude our study for the last three months. This is what we call 13th Sabbath. We'll be collecting a special offering here in a little bit, and um, that, of course, goes to special projects that are listed there on the back of your uh, quarterly, your study guide that, that you have, and um, we will um, talk more about that later on. We uh, also will be starting a new quarter next week. So those of you that are here in the sanctuary today, make sure that you pick up your Study uh, quarterly out there in the lobby and get that. Those of you that are watching at home, if you're interested, uh, write us here at the church and um, we'll be sure to get you one uh, sent out to you so that you can follow along with it as we go through. But we have appreciated all of you attending the weekly study here. We appreciate all of you tuning in out there on the internet and we really appreciate also want to mention this we don't talk a whole lot about it but that is financial support that you have been giving to this ministry over the past year and a half that we have been uh, online now here from the church so we appreciate and thank all of you for giving support to that this morning we have uh, as i said the final study it's called the ultimate rest the ultimate rest and, you know, this whole quarter we've been talking about rest, and we've covered different things in relationship to rest, not just physical rest, but spiritual rest, rest in relationship to Sabbath, Sabbath rest. And it's interesting as you talk to more and more people, come across a gentleman yesterday, and we were talking, and he says, well, um, you're not open tomorrow, you know, being this today. I said, no, sir. He says, well, well, why is that? I said, because we go to church on Saturday and observe it as the Sabbath. He says, you know, the more I study the Bible, he says, um, there's something to this Sabbath business. And um, he says, um, I'm, I'm really, really uh, studying the Bible in relationship to the Sabbath. And, you know, being in the business that we're in, you know, you've got people coming. So it wasn't a, an environment, you know, for an in-depth conversation. But uh, it was interesting that, that he mentioned that, um, you know, some people uh, interact with you in relationship after you tell them, you know, the reason why your business is closed on Saturday. Others just, you know, move on. But um, there was a little bit of interaction there with him. And, you, you know, you, you never know in relationship to people and, and talking with people. You don't know. Seeds, that's what we are. We're seed sowers. You know, sowing seeds here and there is what we do. Um, you know, we are here on this earth as co-workers with the Lord, which we've studied many times before, co-worker, co-laborer, whatever you want to refer to it as, and that's what our mission is here on this earth. Before we get started, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to come together this morning. We pray now as we open up the scriptures that you will send the Holy Spirit in in a special way as we study. Guide our hearts and minds in the study. Uh, give us clear understanding of this rest that we've talked about here for the last uh, three months that uh, we can put it into practice into our lives each day. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to share this with you first off. It's from a devotional, and um, we're going to read this. It's called This Day with God is the name of the devotional, and it's called Complete Commitment, Complete Commitment. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, 
and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. That's Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 5. Angels were expelled from heaven because they would not work in harmony with God. They fell from their high estate because they wanted to be exalted. They wanted to be exalted themselves, and they forgot that their beauty of person and of character came from the Lord Jesus. This fact, the fallen angels, would obscure that Christ was the only begotten Son of God, and they came to consider that they were not to consult Christ. One angel began the controversy and carried it on until there was rebellion in the heavenly courts among the angels. They were lifted up because of their beauty. All should learn their lesson from this, that they are individually amenable to God. When they love God with all their hearts, they will be wise unto salvation. They will do his will, and their light will ever be their glory and be undiminished because they recognize and fear and serve their Lord. The solemn work rests upon every soul to consider that he is a servant of Jesus Christ. Solemnly pledged by his baptismal vows to clothe himself with the righteousness of Christ, will we carry out the living example of the Lord Jesus? I am instructed that every believer must watch unto prayer, lest he fail in the Christian life battle. Every soul must daily seek the Lord with full purpose of heart, morning, noon, and night, and let the mind dwell upon the word of God to understand his requirements. The one all-important matter is to serve the Lord with a full purpose of heart and seek to become the Lord's heart and mind. All who come to the Savior for counsel will receive the very help they need. If they will come in humility and with assurance, cling to that promise. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7, 7. Lift up the standard, beginning with full surrender, and continuing in the simplicity of obedience to all the Lord's commandments according to his special directions. None of the important things specified in his word are to be neglected. Now, did you get that? None. Here again, if you're a test taker, when you see that. None of the important things specified in his word are to be neglected. And this is from a letter that was written to an elder D.A. Parsons in 1910. He's a minister in Southern California, and that's who it was written to. So, looking at that in relationship to being the Lord's heart and mind, the Lord's heart and mind, each day, morning, noon, and night, coming to the Lord, emerging ourselves with the Lord each day so that we can reflect that to others that we meet and uh, in our lives. Well, let's take a look at the ultimate rest. We're on page 104 in your study guide. And a couple of things that we have highlighted from a little book here. It's the companion book, the E.G. White Writings companion book. And I'm on page 89. It says, there must be an entrance of the word into the heart. It must be sent home by the power of the Holy Spirit. The will must be brought into harmony with its requirements. Not only the intellect, but the heart and the conscience must concur in the acceptance of the truth. Satan is a vigilant, untiring foe. And he sleeps not. He doesn't sleep. He knows that his time is short and he will work until the end with every species of deception to draw souls into his snare and ruin them. 
She says, I have a message for you. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Give no place to the devil to stand between you and Christ, lest you savor of the things that be of men and not of God. If your faith is genuine, genuine, it must and will produce obedience. Read that again. If your faith is genuine, it must and will produce obedience. God commands us to do nothing which we cannot do. He will give strength to every believing, trusting soul. Think about this. Cherish the love of Jesus in the heart. Respect each other. For Christ has given his life for you. Every soul, you hear that? Every soul, not a few or some, every soul is precious in the sight of God. It is a wonderful thing to be remembered and cared for every hour by God. Think about that. It's a wonderful thing to be remembered and cared for every hour by God. Every hour to be cared for by God. And that comes from a devotional book called The Upward Look is where that comes from. Every hour. So many things we take for granted. So many things. Like waking up this morning. You know, waking up. Getting out of bed. The fact that you were able to move your legs this morning. That you were able to walk. That you're able to think and be able to talk. And words can come out of your mouth because of your brain functioning. It's taken for granted. It's an automatic. God is so good. So good. And as I've just mentioned here, if our faith is genuine, it must and will produce obedience. It must and will produce obedience. Very important thought. Well, turn to page 105. A vision of the end. Now we're going to go to the book of Revelation. And we're going to start with Revelation 1. And verse 9. So Juan, if you would take verse 9 and 10, please. Madonna, 11 and 12. Lawrence, 13 and 14. Uh, Kevin, 15, 16. And Diane, finish it up. Oh, I missed Ron. Ron, go ahead and finish it up. 17, 18, and 19. Revelation 1. Okay, and the question is, what comfort can you imagine that John got from this vision? And we're talking about John, the disciple. He was on the island of Patmos. It tells us that he was in his 90s, in his 90s when this came to him. John was the only disciple not to be martyred. All the others were martyred. John was not. So that's the background, and that's where we are at this point. Go ahead, please, one. Nine and ten. I, John, was your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day, on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Thank you. As a trumpet in the Lord's day. So the Lord's day is what day? The Sabbath. Sabbath day. Right. Okay, Madonna, the next two, please. 11 and 12. 
which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I see 12 also. I'm sorry. Yes, 11 and 12. Turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Seven golden lampstands. So we've got the, the makings for this. We know it's on the Sabbath that he's getting this. He's on the island of Patmos. Go ahead, Lawrence 13, 14, please. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt with the paps, about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now can you visualize that? And again, you know, as I've uh, taught many months here, visualize this in your mind. You know, it's just like with history when I told you about visualizing things in history. Well, visualize this, you know, the white as wool, eyes blazing like fire. Go ahead, Kevin, the next two, please. 15 and 16, his feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Think of that, the sun shining in its strength when you think about that. And, uh, you know, he was out there um, with a sickle. You know, he read about that and what he was going to do with the sickle. Next, uh, last three, 17, 18, and 19, Ron. Um, and when I saw him, I uh, felt at his feet as dead that he uh, laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. Uh, I, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write these things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will uh, take place after this. So he was charged to write these things down. Send the message out to the seven churches, as Madonna read, all the names of the churches there. Get this information out there to these people. And this, as you see, the title on page 105 is A Vision of the End. He saw it all. He saw it all end. Saw the end there. New heaven and new earth. All the destruction that takes place before. You know, folks... We live in, in a world today that's 6,000 years old, approximately. And we see a lot of bad stuff out there. A lot of bad stuff. And sometimes we may think, well, it surely can't get any worse. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid it will. And the importance of this study here on Sunday is that John was given this. As I said, he was in his 90s. And he was given this vision to share with others and not to keep it to himself. That's why this vision was given. The book of Revelation and Daniel are full of prophecy. There's not a lot of churches today that will tackle Daniel and Revelation. We do as a church. And it's so important because it, has, it is not a locked up book. It is unlocked. And it's a matter of studying it 
and putting your faith in the Lord as we study it. That's what makes it very, very important. You know, at the bottom it says, life now can be hard, even fearful at times. How, though, does knowing that God knows the future and that the future long-term is good give us comfort now? Let me ask you this. If you didn't have any hope, what would your future be? Wouldn't be much of a, a future. What it would be is, you'd say, well, I guess I got about maybe 75 years, so I'm going to grab everything I can grab, even knowing I can't take it with me. I mean, you know, let's face it, all of us have been to funerals, and we've looked at the person that has passed away. There isn't anything they're taking with them. They're dead, and we're going to come to that in a little bit here, too, about death and uh, sleep. Um, so if, if there is no hope, we're in a real predicament. Go ahead, Juan. I think the two Johns in the Bible, John the Baptist and John the Revelator, they received great consolation from God. The first one, John the Baptist, he was in the prison. He was probably discouraged. He was probably restless. I preached the Messiah, and I was sure this was the Messiah, and I'm, I'm rusting here in this prison. Mm -hmm. And then he sent his, his uh, disciples to see if he was really... Uh, the Messiah, and they came with a report, a great report, and I believe John, he was fine. He was, yes, he's the Messiah. I mean, he's raised people from the dead. He give blind, uh, sight to the blind. He make the lame people walk. He's the Messiah. That's what we, he's prophesied. And now we have John, the disciple, the beloved, beloved disciple, I mean, in, a, in an island where there is nothing. And I probably, he probably was at rest. And, and all his companion, all his co-worker has been, uh, like you say, has been uh, killed. Mm -hmm. And he probably was, there was a lot of reason for him to be discouraged and, and feel frustrated. And, and, and then came this from the Lord, this assurance that his hope is not in vain, that there is a lot of hope in front of him. Yes, thank you. A lot of hope in front of him, a lot of hope in front of all of us here this morning. A lot of hope because Jesus Christ came, lived on this earth, gave his life so that we might have life more abundantly. That's what it's all about. Well, let's take a look at a couple of things here. Let's move on to Monday here, and it's called The Countdown. Page 106. Page 106, called The Countdown. And this is very, very important, and to the ones joining us online today, I hope that you have your Bibles in front of you, and I hope that you turn to your Bibles as we read here in the uh, sanctuary, and in particular, I want you to turn to Matthew 24, Matthew 24, and Diane, would you start out, please, with Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5, and then David, would you do 6, 7, and 8, and Kim, would you do 23 and 24? Mike, 25 and 26. Matthew, yes. Brent, 27 and 28. And Susie, finish it up, please, 29, 30, and 31. This is Matthew 24. I want to make sure everybody opens up their Bibles right now. Turn to Matthew 24, and at home, 
turn to Matthew 24 because it is very, very important. The question is, what will his coming be like? This is very, very important that we understand that because there are many different takes out there by people in relationship to about the second coming of Jesus. We are reading from the Bible this morning what the second coming of Jesus is like. Okay, Diane, please. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Folks, that's very, very important. Very, very important. Because it says right here, he, this, is, this is Jesus talking. He's talking to his disciples. He's telling them, watch out. Watch out. Don't be deceived. Go ahead, please, David. And Jesus continues here. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, let's look at this, folks, as you look at your Bible. Verse 6. Notice what it says. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Hmm. Wars going on today? A lot of them. All over the world. All over the world. Some of them, they don't even know why they're going on. They don't know. And you may be sitting there and saying, well, what are you talking about? Well, a place that I think of is Rwanda. They're back at it again over there. They don't know why or what. You know, that's what it is. Um... Then you think of, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All these things must come to pass. We're talking about a lot of wars when you go back in history. Since this time, you know, when he was speaking here. Then it goes on, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. Hey, have you heard about the drought lately? Have you heard about people in other parts of the world that don't have enough food to eat? There will be pestilence. Have you heard about the insects that come in and wipe out a crop? Yeah, they're going on. And earthquakes in various places. Oh, my. Earthquakes. They're all over. Haiti still hasn't recovered from their last go-around. Still haven't recovered. We got, you know, the earthquakes. We got the hurricanes. You know, fires. You know, flooding in the New York City subway system. In Europe. You know, they called that one in New York, you know, the once in 500 flood or something is what they called that one. And things, folks, as you look at this, and you look around, these things are happening more frequently. You know, somebody may say, well, we've had all these things all along. Well, but stop and think about how frequent these are happening now and the intensity of these things. They're intense. Now, I realize I'm sitting here in central Indiana today, but I will tell you this. In my short life, there has been a definite change in the weather right here where I grow up, grew up. I mean, it just, it's either one extreme or the other. Can't just get a little shower anymore. It's a deluge. And then you have a river flowing through your farm like I did this week. Well, Go ahead. We uh, uh, grew up in the past of hurricanes in the, in the Caribbean. I remember when I was a child, my 
mother and my father, they used to talk about a hurricane that happened uh, long when they were probably ch children. And uh, uh, my mother, my father was pretty, probably a little bit older. In, in 1958, they called uh, Hurricane San Zanon, San Zanon, and everybody knew by history about Hurricane San Zanon. And then we have another major hurricane 20 years after that. It was Hurricane David. You probably heard about that, that destroyed part of the island. And now it's every year there is the threat of a hurricane. Every year from September to uh, the end of the month, October, we are, I mean, very, we are, we are, we are be paying very good attention to whatever the meteorologist, meteorologist say it about the weather because anytime one of those big hurricanes may come. So the frequency is now, is constant. It used to be like after 20 years or we have another one. Right. But now right. it's every year. Yeah, yeah. It is and, and they go through the alphabet, you know, and they run out of letters so they have to start all over again um, in relationship to that. Kim, go ahead please. Before I read, I just wanted to say God is so good to let us know what's happening. It's like when you're in labor and you're like, I can't do this, but you have this hope at the end. It's different than when you're just having a kidney stone and there's there's no hope. You know, just like, when is this going to end? You don't know. Right. Um, right. But God gives us hope when he lets us know what's going to happen. He sure does. So, okay, Matthew 24, 23, and 24. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, if it were possible, <laughs> which means it's not possible, um, they shall deceive the very elect. Mm -hmm. Now, folks, and you know, if you're on the Internet today and you just happen to be surfing from one place to the other. It was in happenstance that you have landed here this morning. This is so very, very important. Because as she read, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, or there, do not believe it. False Christ, false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive to deceive, to trick us, to trick us. And that is so important this morning. There have been false Christs, false prophets. There will be more until Jesus comes. And we're going to be getting into here in the next reading what is so important in relationship to when he comes back. Mike? Morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. What a great analogy about birth. You know, there is that hope. Well, I couldn't give birth. I watched my wife <laughs> wrangle giving birth to our children, and it was like, well, I'm glad I don't do that. <laughs> <clears throat> so, 25 and 26. See, I have warned you. So if someone tells you, look, the Messiah is out in the desert, don't bother to go and look. Or look, he is hiding here, don't believe it. I can't move on without making a few comments also. Okay. <laughs> Everything I find in the New Testament, I find in the Old Testament. Let me read one scripture out of Isaiah. Look, I'm creating... A new heavens and a new earth. So wonderful that no one will even think about the old one anymore. No. Nope. Isn't that in Revelation? Yep. Okay. Sure is. So, also in Isaiah, the Lord speaking, this is what the Lord, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty says, I am the first and I am the last. Isn't that in the New Testament? There is no other God 
Who else can tell you what's going to happen in the days ahead? Isn't that what we're reading about now? Yep, sure is. Let all the world look to me for salvation, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by my own name and will never go back on my word, for every knee will bow and every tongue will confess yep. my name. Exactly, and that's right there in the scriptures. Brent, next please. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Now, it's so important there. Verse 27. For as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. That's pretty straightforward. There's nothing secret about that. That is not a secret. That is not something that um, is going to happen and uh, people aren't going to recognize it. It tells you right there. Lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Susie, go ahead and finish, please. Did you say 29 to 31? Yes. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. I also have a comment about the birthing process. <laughs> Jesus said as a woman in labor, well, anyone in here who's had a baby before knows that those labor pains start off fairly decent and then as the time gets closer and closer, the labor pains increase in frequency and intensity. And right before the baby's born, there's no let up. It's constant. So my comment for this morning is the baby's about to be born. Yeah. Yeah, it is very constant, that's for sure, as you look at things and uh, see them happen. Kevin, come ahead, please. I guess we're on the subject, and I'm not to talk about birth because I have not a clue. But I would like to back up because I love what you said, Kim, about if possible, even the elect would be deceived. As a child, I remember growing up, well, that's all the really, really smart people. You know, that's the pastors or the elders and that kind of thing. Well, if you actually look up what the, you know, that means, the elect, it's the adjective is chosen or singled out. The noun is people who are chosen or singled out, one of the centuries elect. So this is us. We are the chosen. And it says, I love that, if possible. But you know something? It's not, not. possible. And I think that we fail to, to realize that. That if we are in God's word, we will not be deceived. That God has already given us every sign, every indication, every jot and every tittle is right there for us. And all we need to do is open it up, read God's word, and he will guide us. And then we, there will be no deception within God's chosen, his elect. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Very, very true. Very true. Well, let's look on down here, and we're going to go back. It says, we've been given a role to fill in the prophetic drama. What is our part? And they want us to focus on Matthew 24, 9 through 14. 
So Barb, if you would, 9, 10, and 11, and then Max, 12, 13, and 14. There in chapter 24, same chapter we've been reading, and we're going to go back to verses 9 through 14 to, uh, to read those. Matthew 24, 9, 10, and 11. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will be betrayed one another, and one will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Notice what it says here. The word that she used quite often was many. Many. Many means not a few. Many. False prophets will rise up. They will deliver you to tribulation and kill you. You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Do you get that? You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. They're going to hate you. They're going to hate me. They're going to kill people. Yep. Max? Matthew 24, 12 through 14. And because of lawlessness will abound and love of many will grow cold. Boy, if that ain't true today. Mm -hmm. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And then the end will come. Now, think about this. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached. He who endures to the end shall be saved. The love of many will grow cold. So we're seeing the love of many grow cold all around us in the world. The preaching of the gospel is going throughout the entire world. And when it has completed the entire world, it says, then the end will come. Then the end will come. I can't give you a date. There are people out there who set dates, but no, that's not a good thing to be set in dates because we don't know the day or the hour. Susie and then Mike. When Barb was reading about they will kill you, they will hate you, I was thinking about the text that Jesus told his disciples that when they do these things, they're going to believe that they're doing God a service. I was talking to my brother on the way to church this morning, and he was commenting on how the text in the Bible that says God will cause people or allow them to believe a lie because they loved not the truth. That deception is going on right now in a lot of fronts. Mm -hmm. And when you see people believing lies, we, you and I have talked about this, it's only one step further if you want to take it into the religious realm to kill somebody to hate them for their belief. They've already been believing a lie, so it's just one step farther to believe another lie. Yes, thank you. Yeah, believing a lie and believing that it's the truth. Very true. Mike? I remember back in Academy, uh, you know, every Sabbath we'd have this missionary hour, and I remember a story that was given that happened at that Back in the late 60s, this Adventist couple went to South America to meet with this group of Indians who are known to be a fierce tribe, but they went there to try to convert them, and they were killed. You know, why would you do that, knowing that you would be killed? 
Revelation 12. And it has happened at last, the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser has been thrown down to earth. The one who accused our brothers and sisters before God day and night. Let us not forget Satan's... Oh, yeah. His home is no longer in heaven, but he has access to God in Christ, and they're all right there, and he is accusing us. He knows our sins better than we do. And they have defeated him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of their testimony. And they were not afraid to die. You know, before we get to the final, final scenes when there's this group that is sealed and will go through, there's some of us that are going to go to sleep. We have people going to sleep constantly. Sometimes death is merciful. In fact, in Isaiah 57, God, God says, I lay people to rest early. I'm paraphrasing, but you can go there. We've got to continue to reach out and love one another. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of a pandemic. You know, I I know there's diversity of thought, but we shouldn't be running scared. Oh, I'm going to die. God has numbered our days. That says that in the Old Testament. He knows when we're going to die. He knows. So I don't need to worry about that. What I need to keep doing, and I'm talking for me, is keep reaching out to my brothers and sisters and encouraging them and reaching out to others and having a right word at the right time when somebody asks me a question. Mm -hmm. And not fear, oh, do I have my mask on? I've got something to share just right in line with it. It comes from the companion book on page 92 of... uh, the uh, E.G. White notes, and this is out of the book called The Acts of the Apostles, and it says this, Long has God waited for the spirit of service to take possession of the whole church so that everyone shall be working for him according to his ability. When the members of the church of God do their appointed work in the needy fields at home and abroad in fulfillment of the gospel commission, the whole world will soon be warned And the Lord Jesus will return to this earth with power and great glory. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And we just read that verse. That's Matthew 24, 14 is uh, where that is found. Marching orders on page 107. Turn to Revelation 14. Marching orders. And we're going to look at verses 6 through 12. And this is very important in relationship to where we are today. And it's a Revelation 14, 6 through 12. Follow along. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God! Give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea. All in that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. They have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, And whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. 
Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. That's verse 12. That's the orders right there, as it says, the marching orders, to seek out and to save the lost, to take the gospel, the three angels' message, unto all the world so that everyone can have an opportunity. You see, it's not for us to decide who will and who won't. We don't have that ability. And if we think we do, we're in trouble. If we think that we have the ability to decide who will receive and who won't receive the three angels' message, we're in trouble and we better go back and do some praying and some rethinking. Because we don't have that ability. We don't have it. All right. A couple more things, then I'll let you, Mike, say something here. Many are in obscurity. I'm on page 92 of the E.G. White Notes. Many are in obscurity. They have lost their bearings. They know not what course to pursue. Let the perplexed ones search out others who are in perplexity and speak to them words of hope and encouragement. And when they begin to do this work, the light of heaven will reveal to them the path that they should follow. By their words of consolation to the afflicted, they themselves will be uh, consoled. Next page. The character of Christ is an infinitely perfect character, and he must be lifted up. He must be brought prominently into view, for he is the power, the might, the sanctification and righteousness of all, of all, not some, of all who believe in him. Of all who believe in him. Mike? Mike? I use a lot of different versions of the Bible, but the one I use the most is the New Living Testament. And I'm going to start reading at verse 12 in chapter 14 of Revelation. Okay. Let this encourage God's holy people to endure persecution patiently and remain firm to the end, obeying his commands and trusting in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from all their toils and trials, for their good deeds will follow them. Thank you. You know, on Wednesday's lesson, I'm bringing things here to a close because we have a special presentation here this morning for our mission. Um, Rest in Peace, page 108 of your study guide. You know, one of the things that it says here, and I want you to turn to this, you have the verses there in Hebrews, and I hope that you read those, Hebrews 11, which is the faith chapter, verses 13 to 16. But then I want you to turn to John, Chapter 11, verse 11. John chapter 11, verse 11. And this is something that everyone in this room is going to face unless Jesus comes before. And this is something that you can't bypass. You can't get around it. It is going to fall upon all of us unless Jesus comes before. Verse 11, These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. He sleeps. Do you realize and have you thought about this? When you go to bed at night, You hit that pillow, close your eyes, you sleep, you rest, six hours, seven hours, then you open your eyes up. Well, how long was that? You might go and say, well, the clock says I went to bed at 10, and now it's 
five, so that'd be seven hours. But to me, it's like a flash. Because when I hit that pillow and my eyes close, the next thing I am is uh, my eyes are opening. I'm being woken up. You know, the Lord's getting me up. And I'm going about my day. Do you think about this? There were martyrs that lived hundreds, thousands of years ago. There were people like Adam that lived a long, long time ago. They're in the grave. It's going to be the same with them as if there's somebody who is martyred here on this earth before Jesus comes. And let's say they're martyred two weeks, four weeks, whatever, maybe two months before Jesus comes. That time is going to be the same because death is a sleep. It is a sleep. The Bible tells us that. It's a sleep. It's a rest. A rest in peace. Because you see, when someone passes away, they're safe. They're safe. It's the rest of us that are still breathing that we better keep in line with Jesus and keep our relationship going with him each and every day. Well, you know, last day on Thursday, the study was about rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And when you look at this true rest, true peace, Philippians 4, verses 4, 5, and 6. Um, Brent, you want to turn to that, please? Philippians 4, 4, 5, and 6, and read that in closing here. Who, so as far as true rest, true peace, what it means in the book of Philippians. Go ahead, please. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. With thanksgiving, let your request be made to known to God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Be in Jesus Christ, safe in his arms, in his bosom, each day. Keeping that relationship going on constantly and helping our lives each day.